All right, so then I just hit the edit right there and we can continue to keep going into things. So the first thing, Danielle, is explain to me the whole, uh, the costume horn thing. <laughs> How I got into it or what they are? <laughs> Like, I, I am I uh, imagining, like, medieval costumes with, like, they're on either side of your head like that? Or, like, I they're make actually, like, dragon? Actual like, horns. Okay. Not nice. not of horn. Okay. Uh, made out of polymer clay. And wow. basically, if you've ever been to the Ren Fair, yep. I think they all pretty much have someone that sells horns. Okay. And nice. they're usually all pretty much the same shape and varying qualities of construction some with fingerprints some wow. lumpy that type of thing so i saw that and i looked at it and i said i could do better than that <laughs> there you go that's awesome. i've been making them for over a decade all right what uh what stories do we do we have to share what do you think um well, I guess I could share a couple from the from the police department. Um, and nothing no, that no, will. No, no. Okay. Nothing cool. incriminating. I, I, I just want to put that disclaimer. I, in I, there, I will. Like, I will keep it as as clean as I can. Um, I try when I write my stories, my crime stories. I shy away. I try to shy away from crimes that I've been a part. Uh, uh, I've, I've been. Or I've been a part of the investigation. Yep. I feel like um, nothing against the true crime writers. That's their job, and that's what. Yeah. But when I'm writing fiction, I feel like I'm not going to use a murder scene that I've investigated because I don't feel that's quite fair. Yeah. To the victim, to I to the victims that. or the victim's family, yep. to use that that tragedy as part of my uh as to entertain yeah that being exactly. said there have been a couple times when things have been um one of which it, it's this is a true story um one of the things that i don't know if the crime scene unit still does it but when i was working there the crime scene unit was responsible for administering breath tests to people suspected of driving under the influence of alcohol. Hmm. We were the only, we're civilians. We're not police officers. Um, we were the only civilians in Maryland who were certified to administer breath tests. All the other jurisdictions had police officers doing this. All right. Um, we every Once a year, we would have to go to the Maryland State Police Headquarters mm -hmm. to be recertified you know, take, you know, do a, do a, um, do a simulated test, listen to the lectures, take a written test, ask the written test, and we could, we could go on, um, administering breath tests for the, for the, for another year. Um, there was, you know, since it was the Maryland State Police Headquarters, that's where the training was. They had a cafeteria. And since we didn't get that big a lunch break, we would go down to the cafeteria to eat lunch. Well, there's this was not me. It was a friend of mine. He was there. He was with a couple of police officers from other jurisdictions, and he was with a Maryland State Troop. Okay. Um, an academy class comes in, you know, very regimented, marching in step, standing at the table, waiting to be told to sit down. You know, and then and all this, a uh, very, very military. And the state troopers started talking about how rigorous the training for, you know, the state, you know, for, for the state trooper. That's, he goes on and on until my friend finally looks at him and says, you know, it's a lot of work for 20 years of writing speeding tickets. Oh, no. John. If there hadn't if there hadn't been too many witnesses, he might have. Oh man. So anyway, that did make it into a story um, called "The Last Convention," it's called "The Last Convention," which is about a fraternal order of police convention in set in Ocean City, Maryland. It was actually written in Ocean City, Maryland, but not at a police convention. 
And um, so that that's 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 the first thing that kind of crept into my story. Um, the other one was, um, well, it's a story involving voodoo. Okay, cool. Um, um, I, I won't mention the name of the business, but the setting was Baltimore. It was right after the double blizzard where we got like 18 inches of snow. And mm. two days later, we got another 18 inches of snow. Oh, man. Thing about Baltimore is mm. if you dig out your car, if you dig your car out from a parking space on the street, you can put traffic cones, you can put lawn chairs, oh, nice. you can put trash cans That's awesome. in that spot. And okay. everybody respects your spot. Baltimore will, Baltimore's had murders over crabs. Baltimore's had murders over pens. Whoa. Baltimore's had murders because one guy said the wrong thing to another guy. Doesn't matter who you are though. This park, the, 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 the lawn chairs in the parking space are sacred. <laughs> the sacred. <laughs> yeah, they say you just don't mess with them. It's illegal as hell, but the mayor's not going in. Yeah, right. Um, now, this was right after traffic started moving again in the city. I get a call. There was a, there was, let's just say it was a business. And um, part, a department in the business just had its first black employee. Mm. He comes to work and finds in his mailbox a voodoo doll, Whoa. Uh, come, uh, 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 a, a tourist, a New Orleans tourist trap voodoo doll, but it was still a voodoo doll. Oh, man. Mm. And a note that yeah. said, your weenie is cursed. What? They cursed his weenie. Oh, my goodness. Now, when I heard this, <laughs> writing what I do, I had to go, I, you know, one nice thing about supervisors, you can make your own calls. Yeah. So I went and went and got this, you know, went to this call. I recovered the voodoo doll, recovered the note. Oh, man. And on my way back, I'm thinking, voodoo doll, double blizzard, parking spaces, and a cursed weenie. Damn it! If I can't get a story out of this, shame on me. Yeah, you're not you're not gonna get a story out of anything if you can't get it out of this one. So the second volume of the Bianca Jones books, the first story is the case of the cursed weenie. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. So that's you know so that's another example of using um, you know, oh, taking stuff from work and um putting them in the story. The third one is um, I was asked to write a Sherlock Holmes story mm -hmm. and um, I had never written a Sherlock Holmes story before. Uh, so I thought back to what things I had done on crime scenes, figuring if I can do it, Sherlock Holmes can do it. <laughs> and the story starts <laughs> off with um, Sherlock Holmes staying in a doorway um, doing bloodstain pattern analysis. You know, being able to tell who got hit, who got who got killed first, and um, what the movements were, just based on the pattern of the blood stains. Wow. So, um, so those those are three stories to start with. Danielle, you wanna? I you, have. You wanna cool. This is this kind of a little creepy, cool right. thing. Good. Cool. When we like we we've both mentioned C.J. Henderson, he was a great friend, a mentor, um, instigator, <laughs> and he sadly passed away six years ago now. And the first book we actually published was meant to be a fundraising anthology for him, and turned into a tribute called "The Society for the Preservation of C.J. Henderson." So even though he was already gone, he's a, he's a great foundation for our company. And when we started to do the Systema Paradoxa books, 
and we first made the announcement that we were partnering with Cryptic Crate to create the series and, and put them out, I had posted a Twitter, a tweet, and um, right as it popped up on my screen when I hit send, you know, post, whatever, um, another tweet popped up right above my tweet. And it was a review for C.J. Henderson's Baby's First Mythos that he did with his daughter. Whoa, weird. And the really bizarre thing is that the review was like 15 years old. What? And the the oh, the man. post popped up right above it. And I, I, I have chills right now just talking about it. Oh, but man. uh oh, he's up there crazy. shaking his fist that we yeah. waited so long. <laughs> Danielle, that's a crazy synchronicity. Have yes. you ever watched Hellier before? Did what? Have you ever watched um it's an online movie called Hellier? No. It's about um these guys that uh go searching for um we'll say it's interesting as you start to watch it but let's say some kind of cryptid uh in kentucky and i think you would find it interesting especially if you're into like synchronicities and stuff lining up out cool. of nowhere like and it's one of those it's like it's a very well done movie but it's also like a documentary at the same time so yeah I think yeah like it so cool yeah, uh definitely check it out uh, thank you if you got some extra time and you like <laughs> uh, you'll like it and it's a cryptid thing too so my extra time is cryptid that's true you're like oh, come on. <laughs> um getting you know going back to the police department um yeah, yeah. i never made any secret um that to you know in the department that i was a writer um uh, there's a homicide. There was a homicide detective who was a big fan of Bianca Jones, and his favorite line was um, Bianca screaming at the top of her lungs, "Do you know why all the bathrooms are on the fifth floor? Because <laughs> you know, oh, do you know why all the all the bathrooms are in the homicide unit? Because that's where the assholes are." My goodness, that and he loved that, that line. Amazing. And oh, um, so you know, in fact, I've edited a book called Ed Cop No Donut. I was waiting and, for you to mention that. And the police, I was doing selling books at a Christmas bazaar at the police department in the police headquarters. <laughs> Speaking of on, assholes. <laughs> yeah, that was on my table. The police commissioner at the time walked by, looked at the book. I said, it's exactly what you think it is. He just walked away like he didn't know. It. No, he didn't know it. So <laughs> they, they knew what I did for a living. I mean, for as a hobby. That's funny. Well, there was a case of a young girl from North Carolina came up to Baltimore and disappeared, uh, missing and presumed dead. Unfortunately, her body did turn up in the Susquehanna, but that, you know, um, during the search for her, um, this woman in South Baltimore set, lets her dog out and he comes back with a big bone. Whoa. And right away, she thinks it's, it's the missing girl. So she calls, she, she calls the police. She leads them to where the dog usually goes. And sure enough, there's dug up ground and you can see white in the ground. Oh man. They did exactly what they're trained to do, which was nothing. And they called the crime lab. <laughs> so I responded. And once I had photographed everything and taken a soil sample, they started digging. And they didn't get far before they found a canine skull. Whoa. And everybody breathed a sigh of relief. Then I said, <laughs> the troublemaker. Hmm. And I said, you know, if I were trying to hide a body, oh, no. 
I dig it deep and put a dog a dead dog on top so you guys would stop digging. Oh man. And they all turned and looked at me. <clears throat> and it was what are you writing another book? That's said, a that's a scene right out of uh, my wife used to love the show Bones. Yeah, and I just like went that totally saying is. Well, they took the dog out, and to their credit, they dug deep until they didn't find anything. If it, if it, if they found something, I'd be legend. <laughs> um, and or not a suspect, the, <laughs> and not in the Richard <laughs> Matheson way. No, if I, I, I <clears throat> they'd never suspect. You know, if I committed a crime, they wouldn't even suspect me. Um, I've had training. I know how to dig. A, I know how to hide a body. Um, but. Um, you know, but it was just that look I got at, between my suggestion, you know, they just kind of turned and looked at me and, you know, you're kind of strange, John. <laughs> that is, that is an awesome story. That's really good. Oh, man. Uh, well, I will tell you what, these have been amazing stories. Thank you for staying on a little bit longer. Oh, glad to do it. Um, Anytime. Yeah, I think that um, we are cool with calling it a night, but I can't. So actually, one one more thing. The whole time I'm reading the book, I'm like, man, this would make a killer graphic novel. Like, it would be really cool. I'm just going to put that like little. It would be. Jason can draw it. I'll write it. Yeah, Jason could do it. Who knows? But I mean, like that's a it's a story where it would lend to some amazing uh, graphical interpretation. Oh, but... a um, two page spread of Snallygaster versus Dueo. Holy <laughs> dude! Holy. We might oh. have to edit the sex scenes. <laughs> nah, oh, no. we'll get DC to do it. Black Label. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. All right, now now you have people thinking Snallygaster Dueo sex scenes. <laughs> I oh. gotta get that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's not, guys, but you gotta read the book. But it's like, I don't know, how do you even summarize that whole thing like in a very like short, you know what I mean? Like hmm. I don't really want to say what it is because I think it takes away a lot from the book. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? So I'm not gonna, guys, you're gonna have to read the book. Yes, but definitely. It's, it's not what you're thinking, so settle down. Or it might be, and if they <laughs> are, God That's bless true. you. It might. <laughs> yeah, maybe they do call it, but I don't think they're going to because it's a it's a good twist. So, yeah. But thanks again for coming on. Uh, Thank you for inviting thanks us. Thanks for having I will us. Definitely keep an eye on uh, on the work of Eastjet for real. So. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, and, oh one last yeah. plug. Danielle and yeah. I are. Um, Co-editing, we are in the process of co-editing <laughs> an anthology of angels and or demons. Each story has one or both in there, and it is called Horns and Halos. Nice. Dovetails with the side business. Yes. Totally, totally. I wanted to call it Halos and Horns, but like I said, she's the horny lady. Awesome. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop recording.